Okay, we are live. Hi. My name is Donkey Sean Jr. and I play a lot of retro games. And tonight is a retro random night, meaning I'll play whatever. Um, don't really have any plans tonight. I literally just picked this game because it's really fun. It's called New Ghostbusters 2. It's a European version of the uh, Ghostbusters title. It is pretty good. Excuse me. It's actually the best Ghostbusters title for the NES, so that's good. And, um, yeah, hopefully it'll be fun to play. And, uh, let me just finish getting my setup totally done here. Getting close. Sorry. I am in a terrible mood, and I apologize preemptively because I am just really cranky today for some reason. Nothing seems to be working right. I keep having all these random audio issues with my, with, uh, OBS where it just like forgets my settings all the time and it's really frustrating because I have to maintain two setups to begin with. Oh, thanks man, yeah, Punisher. <laughs> I can't take all the credit, my wife uh, managed to pick this one up for me. Uh, and welcome stock, good to see you. All right, so let's get going. One of my favorite games. Ego, Peter, and Egon. That sounds like a good team. But, uh, yeah, I don't know why. For some reason, I am just in a super cranky mood. And I'm already in a bad mood because it looks like my internet's already not acting weird on my laptop. So, we're off to a friggin' rousing start. But anyway, I'll just keep playing and hopefully this is, like, being broadcast because at this point, I am too aggravated to stop. Let's see here. This is a super fun game. If you don't, it's hard to find because it was only released in Europe. But uh, it's, in my opinion, the best. It's by far the best Ghostbusters game out there. That's not even negotiable. I mean, I guess the Sega Genesis one is pretty good, but this one is way better. Uh, it's the best one for the NES by far. Um, not perfect, but still pretty fun. The thing that's fun is you have to work in tandem with your AI teammate. Which can make things really fun, but also really frustrating because you have to constantly uh, run back and forth. Oh, that's awesome, man. I just... You! I just heard that they uh, renewed Punisher for a second season on Netflix. That makes me really happy because I thought that was it was really good. But, uh, the downside to this game is that you have to rely on Nintendo AI, which can be, uh, terrible at best. Quite often you'll notice your my, my partner in crime, Egon, will just run off into the wobbly yonder. Which can make this really annoying. You also only take one hit of damage, and there are a couple spots in this game where it's just really tricky. This being one of them, because that guy throws stuff. You also walk on a grid, so it's trickier. Sorry, I have to concentrate this part. But, uh... There we go. So the way it works is you fire your proton pack, Egon, or your second partner will get into position to capture the ghost. Then you press the B button, and the ghost is captured. See, like, that is really frustrating because I'm... I'm stuck on a grid, so it's easy to get killed in this game. Sometimes it's easier if you just stun them and then go. Yeah, this is a really- this one's my favorite one by far. Come on, Egon, let's go. I was trying to find a game that I was, uh, competent with early on because, I don't know, I've mentioned it before, but I'm in a cranky mood tonight, because nothing seems to be working for me. All my audio had to get reset, I like fell asleep at 9 o'clock, and then I woke up and it was like 10.20, and I'm like, oh, I need, I'm supposed to stream tonight, 
that's like the one the one positive and negative like I love streaming and it's really fun but I wish that I could just do it completely on my own schedule which means whenever I feel like it which doesn't work if you want to have like people engage with you get out of here it's the Scolari brothers all right one shot of that that was pretty good This game also has really good music, too. And it follows the movie, like, relatively close. You got the sewer level now. I didn't even realize that was an enemy. Holy crap. These things are really annoying, the, the train cars, because they can hit you pretty easily. gotta learn how to like stay away from them at all at all times. Come on man. Huh. Well now I'm not so angry. The game gave me money. After the, uh, the ghost comes out of the train car, it also will stay open, so you gotta be careful with that, too. Dude. So that was a great example of bad Nintendo AI. Now I have to go track down to find this one last enemy because everything in the game is a screen clear. There we go. Oh, the uh, the newest one, like the one with the all female cast, it was like okay. I mean, here's the thing. I'm glad that they, I, like, it was cool that they redid it, and I'm all excited about that. And I thought that they had a good <sighs> failure. Um. That they had, they like they put together the best cast that they could. But here's my problem: the writing sucks. I hate, I hate. I forget the guy's Kevin. Is it Kevin Feige? I don't know because I think he's Marvel or Judd Apatow. I don't know who it is, but whatever type of writing that is, where it's like semi improvisational and like, but not. I just I hate it. Like it drives me crazy. And then I didn't like how the character. Like, the bad guy in the, in the movie was so bad that they literally wrote him out in the middle of the movie and replaced him with the with Chris Hemsworth. Spoiler alert. But I just didn't like that, and I thought that that was so heavy-handed where it was like, oh, that's the... the It's a it's every girl stereotype in, the, in a movie, but it's now a man, and that's really edgy, and I don't know. I just didn't... That, I didn't go for that. I just thought it was really weak. And, um... The other thing was that it... Like, the thing that made Ghostbusters, to me, so good was the comedy, like, the slapstick part of it. It's, it's, you know, Pete Venkman cracking, cracking a joke, and, you know, the go- like, one, two, three, getter, and all these, like, kind of silly things about, like, giant Twinkies, and, like, all this sort of ludicrousness. And I felt like the Ghostbusters, the newer one, just skipped that for, like, yo, let's make really good special effects. And that's kind of what- yeah, I mean, I mean, it was just, like, the improvis improvisation. There was something about it that I just... It just annoyed me. Like, I just... It just annoys me how it's... How they do that. Because it's like, everyone goes into the same improvisation voice where they go, like, Oh, then that happened. What? Oh, that's so weird. But then I did that? Okay, ha huh, huh. Like, it just doesn't... Like, there's only certain people that you can get... That can do that effectively. Like... Um, I can't think of his name. I can only think of, the, of his character. Uh, oh my god, Michael Scott. I can't think of his name. I don't remember how to do this. I remember... Huh, that's how to do it. Yeah, like, I guess, like, I guess, like, I felt kind of the same. Like, it wasn't like, 
something that I was like blown away by, but I wasn't like I wasn't like as offended as everybody else seemed to be, where they were all like, ooh, rage. I just thought that, you know, the originals was so good that it's like, you know, it's almost impossible for them to live up to it because it was like, you had four really great comedians in the at the height of their career, and you just had great special effects for the time, and you had great non-comedian actors like Sigourney Weaver and, um, oh my god, I can't remember anyone's names tonight either. Rick Moran, well, I guess Rick Moran is a comedic actor, but, like, there are just so many good people in that, in that, uh, movie that it was like, how are you ever gonna, how are you ever gonna beat this? Or, surpa or surpass this? The video games, they are a whole other story. 90% trash. Yo, they can go in walls, that's not cool. But then at the same time, like I put it on pa I put it would I would put it relatively close to Ghostbusters 2, because I didn't like Ghostbusters 2 very much. I thought it was I mean I thought it was good, but just not like I don't know, the first one was so funny, and the second one just seemed kind of like, hey, we're going through the motions. It did do one, it did do one thing that I love, where Ghostbusters 2 picks up right where the first one left off. I always love movies do that. Like, there's no, there's no time, or there's no gap in between. I always like that. Yeah, it's true. I do feel like very often that oh god I forgot about those ninjas. They uh it all it often feels like they've just run out of ideas in Hollywood and in general. There's just no good ideas left. But at the same time, like I also think that like a movie like Ghostbusters, if it was like if that was pitched in 2017, it would never be, it would never be released. Dude! I'm failing so hard tonight. Come on. Like, if someone pitched the idea of Ghostbusters, it, like, now, it would never fly, because they would say it's too edgy, it's, like, weird, it's not, it's not traditional, they'd have to spend all this time trying to cast people in it. Okay? I mean, like, there's so many movies like that, too, like, when you think about it, Back to the Future, that's a great example, that would never get made now. First off, like, you gotta figure out how to get around, like, the fact that, like, the whole movie is kind of, like, incestuous on a, on, a, on a certain level, and then to add to it, you have, like, the science fiction of it and all the craziness, and then, like, there'd be, like, a million different people arguing over who would play Doc Brown, and, like, it would be impossible. Hey, Rain of Onum, how's it going, man? Thanks for stopping by. Yo. I am having a cranky night tonight, so I apologize if for uh, any excessive cursing, but it's going to be one of those nights, especially with this game. Yep. Ooh, extra life that. Oh, me? I don't know. Did you ever have one of those days where you just, like, nothing works correctly the way you want? That was pretty much my entire night. Like, I have I have a, a thing with, like, OBS where every, like, couple of weeks, it'll just, like, completely lose all my settings for no reason, and I can never figure- I can't figure out why, and that's what happened tonight, and then, like, I'm an old man with a, with a wife and child and a full-time job, so I came home from work, and I was, like, exhausted, and I- 
like a loser, I fell asleep, and then I woke up, and I was like, oh my god, I have to stream, I'm so tired, and then it was like, hey, cool, nothing is working, eh, crank. So, I'm cranky tonight. And to add to it, the AI for this game for my boy, I'm Peter, is the main guy, and I got Egon, and Egon's being an idiot tonight, he's just failing me, failing me miserably, over and over again. Gotta throw that trap faster, man, come on. Here's a question. Why did they never make a arcade a port of the arcade game? Because that was actually the best Ghostbusters game. I love that game. I really need to set up a main cabinet so I can stream main games. I miss that. Come on now. That's a good idea. I need to do that. Oh my god, it happens to me all the time. Well, I think part of the reason is because I use a... Like, for this stuff, I use a... Um, yo... I use a uh, the USB old-style Elgato capture card, and then for, like, modern games, I use the, uh, the PCIe one, the HD60 Pro. So I think the problem is that because I have two capture cards, it just goes nuts every time, and it's like, I don't know which one you want me to use. And that's what my guess is, is that it just takes a poop every once in a while. I mean, not that Elgato's, like, drivers or anything to, to write home about, in my opinion, because I think they're goofy to begin with, too. So, who knows. It's the price I pay for being stubborn about not using emulators. Unfortunately. Or fortunately, I guess. Oh, the arcade game stock is awesome. It is, uh... It's sort of like this, but like, with, you know, arcade-style graphics, and you're by yourself, and you just have the, uh, Proton Pack, but it's, like, actually kind of scary, and, like, it's really good. It's one of the better arcade games, in my opinion. It wasn't pretty... It wasn't widely distributed, so I'm not surprised a lot of people don't know it, but it, I thought it was really good when I used to play it. Yeah, every- I mean, I don't know. I think- I really think it's because of that, because I switch back and forth between USB and, um, the, uh, the PCI. That it just- oh, like, OBS is not designed to have, like, multiple setups. It's- it's designed to have, like, multiple scenes, but it's really not designed to, like, you know, have multiple types of inputs and everything. I mean, it's alright, it is what it is, but... It was just mega frustrating when I was, like, trying to do stuff and, like, oh, cool, none of my audio works. Oh, cool. But it's also, like, what do you want? It's a, you know, I'm trying to, you know, record a, a system from 1980. You know, this is an 80... This this console I'm playing on is an 89, I think. Or no, wait, this is a 90. This, this, this was, I got this right when the first top loaders came out, so it's a 90. Oh, and yes, I do have to go back because I have to capture all this crap. Come on, you idiot! What are you doing? Oh, hey, Demo. This is... Uh... This is New Ghostbusters 2++. Plus Plus. That's the most ridiculous name, but that's what they call it. It's a, it's a European slash Japanese Ghostbusters game that we never got in the United States. Um, but I was able to get a reproduction cartridge. Uh, I forget where I got this. Ooh, cutscene. But, uh, it's awesome. If you are an emulator person, I would very, very highly recommend trying it out. It's, out of all the NES games, NES Ghostbuster games, it's far and away the best one. I mean, the original one is kind of, eh. And then, like, the second one is, like, okay. Uh, I need to warn everyone for this level, if you have, like, eye problems like I do, just be ready, because this slime pattern is, is, it's, it's mind-numbing. It makes my eyes go crazy. Where are you guys going? Ugh, my eyes are going nuts. 
Yeah, it's cool. It also, um, not to bring up social justice issues, but it's also the, like, only Ghostbusters game where you can play as Winston. For some reason, they never have Winston as a playable character, which I always thought was really kind of, uh, strange and dis disheartening. Um, you can also play as, uh, Lewis, which is the, you know, Rick Moranis' character. Can't play as Janine, but Dana Barrett's in it. And that weird dude, uh, Milos. That guy used to creep me out so much. I think it's Milos. Alright, extra life. <laughs> I know, I feel the same way, like, I don't know. I love, I love original hardware and original cartridges at all times, but... I do, I do understand the, the allure of the emulator, and the allure of the EverDrive, because there's certain games that, you know, we've talked about this stock, that, like, I'm just never going to be able to buy, like, I'm never going to be able to afford, I mean, unless something crazy happens, like, I win the, like, I win the lottery, but, uh, you know, I'm never going to be able to afford Little Samson for 1200 bucks or, like, 1500 or whatever the hell it's going for now. Or like, you know, not that it not that it's a game I would play, but like, you know, stadium events goes for like thirty thousand dollars because it's so rare. Like I'm never gonna be able to afford afford a cartridge like that. It's just not gonna happen. And that's okay. So, you know, emulators are a good alternative. Plus, you know some people talk about it where they you know, it's it's an admitted fact that like sooner or later some of these games are just gonna be too damaged to play or they're not gonna work anymore or you know, CRT TVs are going to disappear because no one makes them anymore, so, you know, eventually, in some distant, bleak, horrible future, emulators are going to be what we got. I mean, hopefully I'll be long gone by then, but still. That might be my son's unfortunate reality of life. But, you know, since I'm into into these, I know that I already guarantee you that my child is going to be anti-video game. That's how it works. He's going to be a workout guy, football... Sports. I know it. He's gonna hate music. Never gonna have. He's gonna be clean shaven. Just the exact opposite. He's gonna hate computers. He'll be in shape and social. That's gonna be. That is so cool. I really want to build a retro pie. I think my next big project is I have a Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, arcade cabinet, like a like a real one. Um, that's my nickname. But uh, I really, really want to get it fixed because um, I had it set up for a long time. Sorry, this part's har harrowing. But, uh, I had it set up to be an emulation machine for a long time, and then I kind of took it apart when I moved. And then I never put it back together, and then the machine, the computer I had inside of it, like, died. So, I need a new computer to put in it, but I really want to put one in there, and then I can, I can stream main games. It'd be so easy to do. But I don't, I mean, to me, I guess, I guess I'm hypocritical in that for, for arcade machines, I don't, I don't feel as as passionate about original originality as I do um, with NES games because I feel like arcade games are they're hard to, to keep and maintain and they cost a, a fortune yo Egon AI is being bones. those are so cool That sounds like an awesome, uh, like, giveaway pro, too, you know? Somebody subs to your channel for two years or something, you're like, I'll give you, you can have a retro pie, custom made. But I really want to, I really do want to get back to, uh, getting that main cabinet set up, because it wouldn't be that hard. I mean, you don't even need that much to run most of the old arcade games. Like, anything new, yeah, you need some, like, crazy hardware, but stuff that I play, you don't, I mean, you can, I was running it on an, ins, uh, I was running my main off of a Dell Inspiron E1505, and the only reason I stopped working was because the hard drive died on it, and I didn't, didn't feel like paying for a new one. 
I'm supposed to get this guy. Oh, this boss. This is the heartburn monsters. That's what I call them. You don't kill these, trap these guys, I forgot. Heartburn monsters, because they shoot. See, this is part of the thing that I don't like about this, this, this part, is that the enemies, like, their attacks are, like, hard to see, because it's all pink. They should have picked another color, like, white. Blue. Messing with me in my bad eyes. I think I have to capture this guy. Yay, I win. Yes, we are, Freyas. That's awesome. I'm I'm jealous. I wish I knew how to how to design one. That'd be fun. I you know, like I said, I think re like emulation is awesome, but I just like I like original hardware stuff, but like a retro pie I think is a really cool in between because you're building it yourself. It's not like you're just like, you know, downloading ROMs and putting them on your desktop. Like that takes skill and and patience. Are you building it into like a NES cartridge or is it just like a box? I saw a guy do one that was in a Back to the Future box I thought was really cool. I almost bought it on that one. Oh. Okay. You're welcome, Dana. That's really hard. Yeah, go ahead. I don't care. Plug away, my friend. Plug away. And I appreciate you asking because I've had other people just like spam crap in my chat before, which is not the coolest. And I wasn't like all super vented. <sighs> Let's see. I appreciate the ask. Yo! Getting stuck on stuff. Yo, orange slimers. This game, by the way, on a scale of 1 to 10 difficulty-wise, is about a f 6. Once you learn how to how the game plays, it gets really easy. I mean, not that I haven't died like a billion times. You get a lot of cheap deaths in this game. Because the biggest problem is you move on a grid, so you get stuck sometimes, and the enemies are just lined up perfect. There you go. That is awesome. I will definitely check that out. You. Yep. These guys who have unlimited range with their weapons. I always think that's something you can get. Because it's like, why is there a random jellyfish jar? Or a goldfish jar? Damn it, Egon. Egon is ruining my life tonight. That is really cool. That might be a fun little... I might have to get a project on that going soon. Come on, man! Failure tonight. How many lives do I have left to say? I only got one left. And I can rack up some points. My crankiness is boiling over into my gameplay. Hey, 
Every once in a while this happens. Like, I stream with my cousin Brett. I haven't done it. Uh, we're gonna do it next Tuesday. We do it every other Tuesday. And, uh, Brett's my partner in crime. We've been playing games together since, like, I don't even remember. Like, we were, like, two. But, uh, I always laugh because one of us is always Mr. Angry and one of us is always, like, Zen Patience Man. And, like, 80% of the time, I'm always the patient guy. But once in a while, I just, like, lose it. There's, like, one or two games... I think there was, um... What's that Famicom game? I can't remember the name of it because I'm failing at everything tonight. Um... Not Drax Night Out. Kid Dracula. Oh my god. I never got so mad in my entire life playing a game like that because we got to the very end and we couldn't beat it and I was getting so angry. Zelda 2 also pushes me to my boiling point quite often. Just because it's so long and I don't use like speedrun tricks and stuff so I don't like warp through half the game. And man, that game can get so tedious. Okay. Can hit him, he can't hit me. Failure. I've already continued twice tonight. Ah. <sighs> Gonna make you feel all my rage. That's really cool, right? So I feel the same way, like, I, I play Moderns on occasion, like Destiny 2, and like, I do have a World of Warcraft addiction, but I kind of consider that almost a retro game at this point anyway, because it's 2001 when I started playing that thing. I was a big WoW addict back in its heyday. I had one of my accounts banned, and I made a whole other account, just so I could continue. I got my account banned by some scumbag because... We were, um, the guild I was in was really good, and we were playing some PvP, and we f we destroyed this one alliance. We were, we were all Horde, and, uh, we had kind of a funny guild name, and, uh, we were playing some PvP, and we went up against an all another alliance guild, so it was guild versus guild, and we trounced them real bad, and we taunted them a little bit. Never said anything inappropriate, but we definitely made fun of them. And uh, they reported us, and they reported me for cheating, and I got insta banned, courtesy of Blizzard. Not cool. WoW is a uh, it's it's kind of hard to get into now, but back in its like original vanilla days, such a fun game. It's one of those games you had to spend just an obscene amount of time on to get really good, and then. Nothing was more crazy than being in a 40-man raid and having to coordinate, like, 40 people to do one job. Like, it was it was just crazy. Now it's... I mean, it's still fun now. And I always say I'm going to stream WoW because I still play it from time to time. Um, but, I don't know. I, I first think it's, like, kind of boring for me to stream because I'm not going to be, like, doing any raiding or anything. I would just be, like, questing and running around. And I don't know how exciting that would be for people. But, um, it's a fun game, I mean, if you're into that style of gameplay. And they've certainly made the game easier. I don't know if easier translates into good, but they've certainly made the game a lot more accessible than it used to be. It's a lot less like 60, it's not, it's not 65,000 buttons and a lot of sweat to like be pretty good at the game. There's still a lot of sweat to it if you want to go that route, but they've made it a little bit more accessible to the common gamer, which is good, I think. Spawning on top of me. Yeah, give me that life. This this level's boss is actually the only hard boss in the game. There we go. I would love to, but I don't think we can get a sitter. And I would feel like a total jerk if I just went by myself <laughs> and left my wife home with my son. But I do want to go, so I will try to go see it very soon. We actually have a, uh, my office has a party on Friday 
And we were all joking around that we were all going to ditch the party and get tickets and go, but then I don't think anyone ever got tickets, and I think they're going to be sold out for a long time. This is the only hard boss in the game, Giant Head Milos. But once you figure out the pattern, it's actually pretty easy. That's all you gotta do. You gotta weave up, weave up and down. It's not that easy though. You can still mess up, as you can, as you will probably see. But that's basically it. This is the only boss we had a hard time with when I played through this the very first time. You. Yep. Sometimes their positioning when they move like that, I screw that up, see. Ah, see? Every once in a while they fly further on me than I than I expect. You just gotta rinse and repeat. I don't remember how many times you have to do it, but... Shoot. Sometimes my beam hits, sometimes it doesn't. No one knows. Thanks, Nintendo. Oh, we're getting down. Getting down to it. I haven't read any, like, spoilers or anything, but I've heard that everyone is, like, super amped up about how good it is. The new Star Wars, I mean. Alright, final boss. Kinda don't remember how this works, but I'll figure it out. Vigo. Scourge of Moldavia. All right, I remember him. That's a pretty good likeness of him, too. Uh, now I don't remember how I lied. All right, now I remember. Just gotta hit him with the regular shot and dodge these two attacks. You gotta shoot him right in the dingus. Reading some crazy news article about the actor that played um, Vigo was some crazy. There's had some crazy whole whole crazy story about his whole life. Uh, there's some. Cra uh, that's what I get for talking. Why isn't it sticking? Come on. It's gonna be petty tonight, that's fine. It randomly stops on me. Cool! Just not my night. Just not my night. Yay, victory. Yes. I wish I could remember the guy's name, but there's some crazy backstory about him, about how he was like some crazy alcoholic or something. But anyway, that's Ghostbusters 2. Plus Plus is the official title. Um, very fun game. Also a uh, Satoru Iwata game. Um, for those of you that are Nintendo fans, because he makes all the good games. 
Um, this may, this, my game may crash at this point because I think the ROM that I have on, on the reproduction cartridge is not 100% right. But, um, yeah, it's a fun game. You know, it's, uh, easy to play, easy to pick up. Definitely worth trying to track down if you are a collector. Um, you can get a repro card for, like, 30 bucks from, like, Retro USB has it. Um, OCD Reproductions is my absolute favorite excuse me, reproduction cartridge site, they have, see, there it goes, um, has, it has a, they have a ton of cool stuff, I love it, um, their website, and they have really good stuff, their shipping is a little high, which is disappointing, but, you know, what are you gonna do, um, so yeah, I'm gonna take a two minute break, and I'm gonna try to find another game to play, I have no idea what I feel like playing tonight, because my crankiness is, is overwhelming me, but uh, I'll take a two-minute break, and I will find something, maybe some kung fu. I don't know. But I will be, ba be back in just a minute, so sit tight. 